Welcome to the channel. My name is Protagonist, and in this video, we're going to be going through the only hacks challenge from Hack the Box. This challenge is rated very easy. It's a very simple uh, challenge, and I really enjoyed doing it, but I also found an unintended path to exploit it, to get the flag, and I wanted to share that with you guys too. I love this challenge because it kind of showcases the dangers uh, that are associated with meeting people online and here you are watching me online. You can't trust everything that you see online and that all the people that you interact with, you don't know what kind of intent they have with you. And I love that this challenge kind of showcases that. So we have our instance of only hacks here. We copy the Docker host um, and then we open it up in our virtual machine. So I will open up in a container tab that connects into my proxy. And we have a login screen. From here, we want to sign up now. We will set up my Profile, so protagonist, uh, test, at test, age is 1000, um, hi, please subscribe. And I'm a male, into females, we will add our really nice picture of a goat that I found this one as our profile picture and then we will register. It will then redirect us to the page. Basically the way this application works is we have our um, dashboard that offers up different people that we could match with and then we have our matches. Once you've clicked on one of these, your match will, will appear here. We'll give this a go in Chromium. That is a good idea. Uh, does Thingy offer a browser? Yes. All right, let's give that a go. All right. Ah, there we go. All right. So we have our dating app here. It is loaded fully <laughs> this time. Um, so we have our matches when that loads and we have our dashboard. Here we can either add or remove people. So maybe we want that lady, nah, yeah, nah. And then that's it. That's, that's all of our options. We can move over to the matches page, which will open up our chat and we meet Renata. So let's send her a message. Hi, how's it going? What are you up to? It says, hi there, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I'm just hanging out and enjoying my day. You know, the usual e-girl stuff, gaming, streaming, and chatting with lovely people like you. Hey, here we are. And so now what we can do is let's have a look, quickly look at our requests. Oh, here we go. So this is our message here. Let me just send that to here. So our message is there. Um, we notice that we have our username, our sender ID and the message. Hi, how's it going? What are you up to? So I could send that again. And that does an okay. Let's refresh the page and it resent the message for us. So from here, we can think about like what would be something that we can do to this user as a threat actor, right? So as a, as a hacker, we can think about maybe we could potentially take over their account. If we can take over their account, then we could do malicious, more malicious things with that kind of access. So first thing I want to check is when we log in, does our, our um, cookie have like allow for, for us to interact with it 
with JavaScript. If it does, then maybe we could leverage some uh, cross-site scripting. Um, so when we see the post request here, we can see that the response is here and we're only set, <clears throat> only a path is set. There is nothing about the HTTP um, only flag being set on here. To further confirm this, we can go into um, our inspect and go to, into DevTools, go into the cookies. There we go. I usually use Firefox, so this is like not as familiar with me. Um, so we can go into our cookies and then look across uh, the session cookie that we have. And then here where it says HTTP only, there's no flag set. It's not false, it's not true, which means it's off. This means that we can potentially interact with it with JavaScript. And that's what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do from now is we're gonna open up webhooks. webhook.site, it's a great place to try like your, if you build an API and that kind of thing, you need it to like call out somewhere. Um, for me, I use it to test out uh, cross-site scripting payloads because I can get it to request out and I don't need it to do anything. I just need it to be present and, and respond to a request. Um, so we can do that this way. We wanna to test to see if this, play, this, this field is injectable. So what we'll do is we will try HTML tags. Um, because we wanna see if potentially does this reflect onto the page for us? Um, and if it does, then we might then be able to escalate to uh, JavaScript. In this way, we see that it in fact does. So we we're able to inject HTML into the page. That means the page isn't fully sanitizing the HTML entities of our input. And then the next thing we, we'll, what I like to try is just a simple image tag, right? Oftentimes web applications will have the settings set so that the protections exist for against XSS but they don't exist against, um, they don't exist for normal like HTML injection because sometimes people just don't, don't really care about that. They don't feel like that's a risk to them. Uh, in our case, we wanna check whether image tags are allowed. And so we see here, nothing has appeared. Um, if we do a image source equals X, we see a broken image, which means that the it tried to reach out to X and we'll see that in our request here. So here we have this, this request here, it goes uh, slash chat slash X and the resource was not found. So then we get given this little icon here, which says that it's broken. So now the next phase is testing whether our um, whether we can get cross-site scripting. So what we'll do is we will go image source equals X, close that off. We will then go on error equals, and we'll do a simple fetch. And within our fetch, we wanna put our webhook thing, address, and then we'll put a question mark and cookie. Let's see if we can get over there. Can't see that apparently. Let me just. Yep. So, question mark cookie equals. And then outside of our payload, let me just open up this so we can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, 
So outside of our payload, we want to put our cookie there and then we'll put plus document dot cookie. Essentially what we're doing is we're causing the image to error out. When the image errors out, we'll use this method in JavaScript to call the fetch function to then fetch this website with query cookie equals and then we use plus document.cookie because we're referencing the document so this website the document and we're referencing the cookie within that document so what this will do is it will cause the page to make a request to our webhook site with the cookie attached to it hopefully that makes sense so we'll do that and now we'll send our payload so that's worked we'll check over on this side things hopefully that worked let me just reload this Don't think it worked the first time. Maybe I have this space here. Might be screwing it up. All right, let's give that another go. All right, so that worked there. And we have some requests. So we have a request from myself and 83136251. What's 83136251? That is the server itself. So obviously on the back end, they have a script that goes and checks for these, this kind of thing um, and then um, makes a re response back. So they might be using like Selenium or a Python script that uses a headless browser and that kind of thing. From there, we see that we have our cookie. Yeah, let me just zoom that right in so we have our query string and we have our session token what we can do with that is we will copy that that was way too big for me copy that to here so we don't lose it and what we can simply do go to inspect go to application and then go back to our cookie and then this value we can just simply change that and then we will reload and it will put us in that user's chat. So as you can see here, we have our my profile with my delicious goat um, and, and the messages that we have been sending each other. And here we have our my payloads that went through. Finally, we can see that Demetrius has sent a message to this user and it says it is the flag which is don't trust strangers blindly which is really good advice that is the basic overview of how to exploit this web application now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into a another way to actually get the flag uh, an unintended path where you can actually read the messages uh, and this involves doing an insecure direct object reference or exploiting an idol, uh, which I found just mucking around with this after I'd solved it. Um, so what we'll do is we will restart the server. So we will stop our instance because I want to show that this, this works just from a fresh instance. Um, and so then we'll start it up. We will copy over our uh, IP address. All right, once again, sign up. So now we will add our victim. We'll just add everyone, because why not? All right, and so then we'll go back to our matches 
and we get the same user, right? So we'll click on there and we'll notice a new thing, right? We, well, something that we didn't look into originally was the URL. We can see here that we have an RID Yeah, And when I first saw this, I thought, I wonder what this does. Like if I change this to a five, does it do anything? We get an internal server error. But what if we change it to four again? But what if we change it to a three and it comes through? What we, what I realized was this refers to the, um, the chat that's within the user's like history and it's the ID for the chat. And so it will fill in ID number six, which is the, the ID of my user with this user with Renata and it will fill it in properly. But if I add, if I change this to three, it will just give me the the chat of the other user and gives me the flag. So that was an interesting unintended uh, solve for this one because I think I think it's fascinating that we can do that. So I could potentially then, because it's it's communicating to this user, we can test this out, right? So I'll go hello. I'm reading your messages all right and then we'll go back to our original user we will do our exorcist payload and this is just a proof of concept like does this actually work for our other user so let's copy their session token We will replace our own with the session token of this user. Refresh. And if we go to Demetrius, where that flag is, we were able to send a message one, we could send it as the other person because it's coming, it's the, the chat is between us as the user and the recipient, obviously, like that's how chat works. But in this case, the application is treating whatever I write in here, in this text box, this text box, as from whoever you're logged in as. In the previous case, because I wasn't Renata, it's treating it as I am, what is this guy's name, Demetrius. So I wrote, hello, I'm reading your messages. The web app saved that message as if I'm coming from this. I think this is a really interesting like idol that we can use um, that, that you can think through. So it's not just the fact that there is one vulnerability within this web app, but there's two. Um, there's probably more. Like if we spent a lot of time just mucking around with this, this application, we put probably uncover several more, but I think the point of it was the cross-site scripting and then a plus for us is exploiting the idol. Um, so yeah, but let me know in the comments if you enjoyed watching the intended path and then the unintended path. Um, I really enjoyed finding the unintended path um, and I hope this helps in your pursuit of understanding hacking better and being able to secure web applications better. As usual, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.